That actually puts me on to another point which has been going on in on Twitter. Actually, one of the most annoying things. I have to say something as well. Why is everyone shitting on Tekken 7 all of a sudden? Did people not care? <laughs> Hang on. Where did it start, first of all? Who the fuck started this? And why is everyone just like changing history now? There were people shitting That's on crazy. me versus JDCR at um at Rev Major 2017, dude. Like I don't understand. Like that that was really fun to watch. Like that was a that was good ass Tekken, if anyone, if anything, right? And then Tekken 7 in general, the Tekken World Tour, the 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 storylines and everything. Even if you forget about the storylines, the, the some of these tournament sets were amazing, dude. Tekken always delivered. You know, me, Rip, Rip we've commented how many tournaments now at this point, man, and how how loud have we gotten in certain situations that awaits honey versus a low high moment. One more hit, we'll do it. Oh, oh that's the rage gonna hit. It's gonna the rage it. on. It's gonna, that's gonna be it. Low high with the clutch. When I, I lost my mm -hmm. voice and so many, many, many others over the years, I just don't get where this shitting on Tekken 7 came from. I think there, there is a person that comes to mind, you know, um, and his name rhymes with Lead Hicks. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, le let me get your opinion. For not you. Beat Dicks? No. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> uh, no, not that one. Uh, v, what, what, what do you think about Tekken 7? Yeah. I think the consequence, like, I think I have to take some responsibility because so much okay. of my content is is built on, like, Speed Kicks philosophy Tekken, right? Uh -huh. So, and because, as someone who has a lot of, like, reach, uh, I think that people will jump to agree to that. Um, I also think there is a lot of season, like, I think people who follow me especially or got into the game around I did probably have the freshest memories of season three, four, and then, like, four and a half, new tactics patch, mm -hmm. right? And I think the memories we have of that style of Tekken are very much infinite Azure 2 backdash. Wait for the counter hit, right? I think that, or Fakumram deleting you in like two combos or, you know, release Leroy. So the people who have come on towards the tail end of Tekken 7 have way more negative memories, I think, of the game than people who were there since release and had those hype moments and watching players adjust and navigate from arcade to season one and the glory days of season two, which I wasn't there for, right? I, I played like a couple games, but I really didn't start digging into Tekken 7 until season three, season four. So I think that's part of the consequence. The other thing I think is that there, it, because Tekken 8 was designed as almost direct opposition to the direction of Tekken 7, I think it was bound to happen that it would be so polarizing. The fact that Everybody who was frustrated by watching Kunimitsu backdash mirrors or watching um, go to infinite on counter pick every time are naturally going to like how Tekken 8 forces you to interact, which is more of the speed kicks position, I think, where you are rewarded more for initiating, living in the danger zone and creating decisions rather than playing high percentage defense and option selects and safe poke timings. Right? But if you had an uh, issue with, with, with option selects and, these, and, and this type of stuff, Tekken Tag 2 did that way more, but he loved that game, you know? Again, you're I not speaking, Tekken... I, can't, I can't talk to him yeah. directly here. But... Not even that, though, but, like, the end of Tekken 7 was Kunimitsu, right? Like, you just said people are tired of watching Kunimitsu. I feel like Kunimitsu was, like, the prototype of the characters in Tekken 8. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I think the reason why she didn't thrive as much was due to the context of the meta at the time. But I wanted to talk about the Tekken Tag 2 real thing real quick, where it was a lot of option select defense and movement, but there was rarely a, like... From what I hear from talking to a lot of people who were really good at the time, there was rarely like an 80, 90 percent success rate option, right? Like you would sidestep a certain way, you're exposing yourself to like 40 percent of the other moves, 30 percent of the other moves. In Tech 2. One way, you cut, right? Uh, how I feel in Tekken 7 was that backdash was so good, play for low parry and counter hit was so good that it just skewed the numbers in a way where it made more sense to play a certain, like it was, it was to the extreme where uh that style of play if you played a character that could do it especially too was too good i played noctis there's a set with mm -hmm. me fighting me where he had all of this legacy skill he knew how to bait movement he knew how to bait pokes and all i had to do was run away and hit up forward one and a hop knee i as a fan of tekken 7 as a someone who loves that style of playing even I felt like that was kind of messed up that I could close the skill gap that he had all this legacy skill that I could pick up a sword and run away and it would be fine so I feel like I'm in the middle where I love Tekken 7 I love Tekken 8 I can see why people were upset or bored or frustrated with Tekken 7 based on that context I think That's how I feel I, honestly that. I think that in Tekken Tag 2 you, you were able to option select a lot more options and like get around 
certain moves and, and stances. Like Steve is a good example as well. From Tekken Tag 2 to Tekken 7, dude, if I did like a sidestep left and duck in certain situations, I'm getting around every single of, of your options in with Steve, yeah. right? Whereas in Tekken 7, that, that just didn't exist. I, and I was doing mm -hmm. that for like a good year still. I was still sidestep left and duck in I'm getting hit, right? Um, I just think that it's 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 crazy to me. Like, I'm still trying to think about this. It's like the defense in, in Tekken Tag 2 was a lot a lot scarier than it is than it was in Tekken 7. Tekken 7 forced you I... to, to be more aggressive. I think the Tekken World Tour rule was an issue. The fact that yeah, the reason why we yeah. saw the the infinite Big. stage is it was it was Tekken it was because Tekken World Tour it it forced you to it allowed you to to be able to play on infinite stage if you wanted to and obviously with certain characters like Zafina and um and Kunimitsu which have really good backdashes of course they're gonna be going and I was an Eddie main back in in that uh, in that game as well and I would obviously go to infinite stage because it just it it really helps that character but. If we didn't have that that rule in the Tekken World Tour, we wouldn't have seen it as much. You know, we would have seen more mm -hmm. engaging. I think. At risk of falling too much into the discussion, I think the last thing I would I would want to say is that um, in Tekken Tag Two, it was and Tekken Six and Tekken Five, you could use movement offensively. Like if you read a keep out button or something, it was very feasible to move around it. So as an attacker, you could run in and step around something. And someone would be punished for throwing out a blind button. But there were too many times me as a DLC character could put out my homing safe counter hit launching mid. My relatively good tracking pushback like high, right? I think uh, the attackers didn't have skillful ways to outplay me doing my thing no matter what they did. And I think that is the beef that comes like in the, in the speed kicks philosophy of like looking at Tekken. I think that's where a lot of the frustration came from is that there was no way to punish me for being like brain dead defensive, right? But but you're saying think, that using forward forward one plus two is an issue because it covered a lot of options and it was. You're saying that's def that's a defensive option because doing forward forward one plus two. I think so because yeah. as an offensive move, it gives up my turn. They can just block. But as a defensive move, it's broken. Okay, but having that kind of move, like it doesn't doesn't Tekken eight do that as well? I feel like that's hell in Tekken forward, forward, one plus that's, two. That's forward, forward, one plus two seems like a very Tekken eight type of move, man. And it's also, not launchers, but they're all heat engagers. Yeah, 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 yeah. it would be a heat engager. Yeah, like I, I, if you have an issue with like um, um the, like moves which cover a lot of options and give you a lot of reward and very little risk, and it, you, there's little counterplay to it. I feel like that's Tekken eight <laughs> in a way. So I don't know why he would. have I an can't issue think with, of a yeah. Noctis forward, forward, one plus two in Tekken eight outside of Victor's up forward two. Like, uh, like. Uh, moves which don't do which which don't give you many options right like a uh, dragon of qcf four, limited for options I think yeah, oh yeah, yeah if we if we, if we want to talk about dragon of two i think the s tiers of tekken 8 commit similar sins that will frustrate people i think that no doubt like i, I would not even deny that that dragon of qcf 4 feels a lot like a four four one plus two where it's just do it see what happens so i i agree on that point for sure yeah and like nina's power crush into heat and stuff yeah. uh rip what, what do you what do you make of of that tekken 7 versus tekken oh. 8 like you know, oh, that, that thing's crazy. Like, I, didn't, I didn't even bother chiming in on Twitter. Once I saw it, I was like, this is just people with short-term memory, man. Because I feel like even if you look... It's funny because even if you look at Combo Breaker at the end of Tekken 7, Nii versus Arslan, Grand Finals, on the Infinite Stage, you know, the, the crazy comeback that Nii made to get the reset in the Grand Finals. Like, that was so incredibly hype in the Grand Finals and getting reset. Like, dude, that was... The worst kind of Tekken 7. Zafina on an infinite stage, and that was super hype. Like, people just have short-term memory, man. Tekken 7 was sick, even when it was whack. <laughs> Joker, what do you think? I think, like I said before, like I don't like to uh, compare the games. I like to accept the games as they are. But I think Tekken 7 was a great game. Obviously, it had a, its problems, but Tekken 8 also has its problems, and it's fine to have problems. There's no fighting game that's perfect, you know? So, yeah, I think Tekken 7 was a great game. It did a lot for the scene, for the whole series in general. Like, yeah, man, I miss Tekken 7, but we're, we're playing Tekken 8 now. So Do you agree with the uh, criticism uh, by certain people saying, saying Tekken 7 was ass and, you know, it wasn't? I understand where they're coming from because we're, we're playing Tekken 8 now, but I don't agree with it necessarily. Fair enough, man. Very political answer, Joker. Thank you very much, man. Uh, Kokoma. You're welcome. <laughs> Kokoma, uh, what, what do you think about Tekken 7? What was your... I've never asked you, like, what was... What did, did you like Tekken 7? Was it a game that you really, really enjoyed and thought it was good? There are more things to watch, like, 
there are more fun thing to watch like many point mm. like this this game is just almost thing is like 50 50 but in Tekken 7 was different like how how they depends how they attack how they keep the range kind of many way to watch there mm. there are so I didn't expect myself but I also missed Tekken 7.